All right, what's up, everybody? We're going to do a really quick breakdown of the world's most boring trading day. It is May 16th. Let's bring up the charts. Uh, absolutely nothing happened today. You can, still, I, you can see I still have all of my brackets on um, from that. That shouldn't. Oh, that's the type two there. Okay. Still have all my brackets on, waiting for a zone to get tagged. I uh, I took a loss on Friday. I ended up shorting the zone. You can see from the little arrows there, I took the type one short. We continue pushing up. I took the type two short. My stop was right here. We pushed up. I tagged out of it. You can see it's hard to see because my zones are the same color as uh, my zones are the same color as the arrows here. But you can see I've got little blue arrows right there. And that means I got tagged out. So we did end up getting the retest type one. So I went long right there. We pushed up and then Sunday evening, we're right up in this area. I thought about closing it down, decided to let it go, see if it would hit my take profit and it sold back off. So that's annoying. Um, the interesting thing about the way that futures contracts are traded by the way, and I still, I need to get like, get with customer service with TradeStation to actually figure this out completely. But um, you could see I tagged out of my short position here and then got in my long position here but the way that they actually calculate out your futures contracts, uh, it kind of goes through that overnight settlement period, and then it'll tell you where your uh, your cost basis is. And so it's calculating my cost basis from these wicks. Rest assured, I actually got in here. It's just the way that futures are calculated. Um, it's not like I'm missing out on those, uh, what would that be, about 16 points of profit. It, I'm not missing out on that. It does all get worked out in the way that the math works. Like I said, I don't completely grasp it, but it, it does work out. So it's not like they're like, oh, yeah, we're just going to take those 16 points away from you. No, that's still 16 points that I'm in the green right now. So I'm I'm just sitting here in a position doing absolutely nothing. Uh, we pushed up. We pulled back. We kind of got faked out. We pushed up again. I thought about locking it in again, and I said, nah, you know what? My take profit was like right up here. And then the stupid thing sold back off. Three o'clock rolled around today. It's power hour or sour hour, and it was sour hour. We sold off and came down here, and now we're just kind of hanging out. And uh, so that led to me doing a whole lot of nothing, just waiting for my take profit to get tagged. I did end up scooting my take profit, so if we test that level one more time, I do want to be in on this trade. Um, I'll show you my trade review results. Not a whole lot of exciting anything going on here. Locked in a loss on SPX uh, in my ongoing effort to try to make something back on my options account. And then there's that loss on MES. So if we go to our actual reports, um, within the last 30 days, I'm down about $1,900. You can see I'm recovering a good bit of that as a result of my futures trading. Uh, over the course of 90 days, I'm up about $1,400. Um, well, it was up 3,000 at one point within the last 90 days, apparently. If we go to our detailed breakdown, this is all of my trading results total. I'm up about 1,200 on the year. And uh, if we go specifically to futures trading, let's go ahead and do that. And I've been kind of keeping track of futures trading from the day that I actually started taking it seriously. That was May 2nd. I had a couple trades before that, but we'll just disregard those for now. I'm up about $1,900 with obviously the majority of that being last week. Um, the cool thing here is I am gradually moving this number right here, that average daily gain or loss. You've heard me talk about that before. Um, that is a number that I am focusing a lot of attention on because I want to see that number going up in the long run. And so what I've started doing, we'll go ahead and plug it into our spreadsheet right here. We've got uh, 197.95. And that means we haven't really moved at all because we didn't really trade at all today. Never tagged a zone, so never got an order filled. Uh, my focus is going to be on making this just trend upward. Obviously, my PL chart would be trending upward in the same way but that average daily gain or loss is what i'm really dialing in and focusing in on because if that's gradually going up over time it means that my trading expectancy and my ability to actually earn money as a trader is gradually going up over time as well so there you have it um today like I said, I took that loss on Friday. Thought I could have. The only thing I'm kind of kicking myself about, and hindsight's 2020, right? I could have locked it in there 
and then we sold back off and I saw this point of consolidation we've got something interesting going on on the charts that is is going to be worth paying attention to purely for directional trading um, like if if I was going to try to get in and out on a scalp or something like that I don't want to start picking back up that habit uh, I've I've proven through the back testing that I've done so far that scalping does not tend to work out for me so I'm not really going to be doing that but um, there you have it we are range bound and I would venture to say that whatever direction we break we're going to run that way a little bit the issue that we're going to run into is there are zones on each side of that so I still have all of my limit orders in place I'm still rocking what was a type one position I'm either going to hit my profit up here and then be hopefully looking to short if we continue pushing up or uh, if we pull all the way back here I will grab that type two and we'll be long with three contracts and hopefully my take profits right there so I'm hoping that would be like a real quick uh, about 40 points that I would need to get profit on that and that'd be a three to one risk to reward ratio and it's those snappy type two trades that same thing up here um, those will really make up quick for the time that we spend doing a lot of nothing um, the only other thing that's really worth talking about is the overall trend of the market right now. Um, we're we're back in this range. We sold off last week, hit two standard deviations down, got bought right back up, broke through that zone. Now we're consolidating. Um, I am looking, I would love to see it up here. That to me, I'll probably be buying a longer term spy put. I'm still thinking bearish. So I want to see something of a bullish attitude and we hit that and then... Uh, possibly start selling off from there um, the weekly charts we made a lower low this region right here would be great for a lower high I don't know I could see either one if eh, I don't really care about EMA lines on a weekly chart I don't really care about EMA lines so not even gonna bother looking at that so <laughs> there's my plan I'm just gonna continue trading the zones as my back testing has dictated and uh, we will see what ends up coming out of it. Um, not much more I can do outside of that. One final thing that I want to touch on is how I've tweaked my zones, um, because that was something that I needed to do before and never really uh, paid much attention to. So here are Don's charts. And as I've pointed out before, he trades on, or he doesn't trade these, he can't, he's American. Um, but he charts on the CFDs because the data for those is free. So this is the chart for the CFD, and then I'll go over to the continuous contract on the futures. And let's let's go ahead and break these out into two different uh, two different windows. And you can see the zones, the charts, the the price action, everything is going to be remarkably similar between these two. Uh, interesting thing that ends up happening, though, is the prices on the continuous contracts are going to be the same as the CFDs. Really? They're really close. They're off by about two points. Huh. That's really interesting. I thought they were further off than that. Never paid much attention to the prices. Um, the thing that I've noticed is that the zones on the continuous contract, like if, if you go to the CFD here, and uh, we go all the way back to like where Don grabbed this zone. You can see the, the main point of structure, if we're doing a lesson in zones real quick, the main point of structure is right here. We got rejection off the type one, came all the, all the way back down to that zone, pushed up. Clearly there's the type two, your stop would go above the wick, sold off from there, pushed back up, held the type two, held the type one, we consolidated for a few days and then broke up and on out of it. If we try to do that same, pro get over on this monitor what are you doing if we try to do that try to do that same thing on the continuous contract uh, what you will actually notice is that your zones and your candles are going to be slightly oh, help if I'm on the right time frame they're going to be slightly different uh, only slightly but you'll notice the type 2 that I have drawn out here looks like it's this looks like it's too far up it should have been right about here and I had drawn those same lines when I copied the zone from the CFD to the continuous contract. And I ended up missing the type one entry down here. If we could see it behind all this uh, volume nonsense, I ended up missing this type one down here because it never actually touched my zone. 
I'm oh, sorry, we're looking at that area, not that area. This zone did end up getting to, you know, it needed to be tweaked as well. You saw me do that last week. I made some adjustments to make sure my zone was actually accurate. Um, what I realized is that the continuous contracts take the the futures data of the contract that is the closest month to expiration, and it utilizes that for the pricing. So that 4,008.25 is the June expiration. And then if we did the September expiration, which I apparently typed incorrectly. Let's try. Oh, it's U, not K. If we do the September, you can see it's about a point difference. That point difference doesn't seem like much, but when you're looking back over the course of a year, those points will end up adding up to be just a couple points different from where the candle actually printed to where that zone actually is on something like the CFD. And what I've noticed is that the CFD... Um, if I try to just copy the zones correctly, I end up missing out on trades or my trades are a little bit off because my zones are a little bit off. So one of the things that I started doing to sort of fix that is I, I noticed that the point values are going to end up being more or less the same. And so I started using that to uh, determine where I want my zone. So if I saw that uh, let's say I drew out this zone on the continuous contract and I really liked where it was at and I wanted to double check my other zone. I would measure from the top of this one to the bottom of this one and that's going to be about 55 points. And then I could go back and do the same thing on my on my uh, zones right here or technically on the uh, continuous contract. I measure from top to there. And that is about 57 points, so apparently I never adjusted that one. I can measure the point differences to make sure that like my zones are accurate, and that's what I've done for these zones that I don't truly have accurate data for. I've used this as the baseline, measured down, use this as the baseline, made sure the zone's the same width as the other one. So we will see as we come down and start messing with these zones, or as we push up and start interacting with other zones, uh, we'll see which one of those ends up being really accurate and how it ends up playing out for us. Um, that's just a, a quick little lesson on how I'm doing charting, taking the, the zones that Don draws on the CFDs and applying them to the futures market. Um, obviously, it's been working out pretty well so far. We will see how it uh, continues to work out in the future. Um, as of right now, today was just boring. So hopefully uh, we lock in a win here soon, start making some money again, and uh, can start taking advantage of movement in the markets because... We didn't do a whole lot of moving today. Not in, uh, not in MES anyways. So thanks for watching. If you want to follow along with my trading journey, be sure you click the little subscribe button thing. And who is calling me? Potential spam. Well, hello from potential spam. That's all for me. And I will see you next time.